Hey everyone, welcome back to another video. I'm gonna go actually start you get to start seeing the pictures today. <laughs> Sorry for the long video yesterday. I didn't realize that it was gonna take 20 minutes to read the beginning there. Or I would have went a little faster. This video is gonna be like five, six minutes maybe. There's not like a real time limit, but I'm not trying to I'm gonna try to go over time. I go below ten if I can. But yeah, thanks. Thanks all for watching. I appreciate it. Alright, here we are. The starter of the start of the pictures. Here we are, to see September 3rd, 1939. There's one Mr. Neville Chamberlain. It says, 21 years of peace ends. In a broadcast to the world from number 10 Downing Street at 11.15 a.m. Sunday, September 3rd, 1939, Prime Minister Neville Chamberlain said, this morning, the British ambassador in Berlin handed the German government a final note stating that unless we heard from them by 11 o'clock that they were prepared at once to withdraw their troops from Poland, a state of war would exist between us. I have to tell you now that no such undertaking has been received and that co consequently this country is at war with Germany. Now, may God bless you all. May he and the consequently this may he oh yeah may he defend the right my bad sorry it is the evil things that we shall be fighting against brute force bad faith injustice oppression and persecution and against them i am certain that the right will prevail mr neville chamberlain obviously he resigns um not long after this for a few failings but not quite yet. Here we see the first sirens that are sounding in London. Pictures of all these stoic people. And then them, them running, I'm assuming to shelter. It says, war comes to Britain. No, I should also tell you the date. September 3rd, 1939 still. War comes to Britain. Anxious faces lined the... Uh, pavement in Downing Street on that eventful Sunday. As Mr. Chamberlain in the cabinet room number 10 began his broadcast, almost as he finished speaking, the wail of the air raid sirens all over the country electrified the already tense atmosphere. Wait, what? Yeah, all over the electrified that had, yeah, the already tense atmosphere. Londoners, expecting bombs to drop, made their way to shelters in quiet and orderly groups. It was a false alarm, and soon the sirens sounded the Raiders Pass signal, but no declaration of war had been more dramatic. Uh, yes, it says, you know, they all are in an orderly fashion. This looks a little bit more disorderly, but they're not, no one's frantically running, it looks like. The British, obviously, did very well at keeping, and this really angered uh, Mr. Mister Funny Mustache Man, as I'll call him now, um, very upset him because they never showed signs of giving up. The British spirit, as they would say. Always something to admire. And then here we go, the Athena torpedo torpedoed. Oh, man. September 3rd, 1939. I'm assuming that is the Athena. It's not saying, but... That's what I would assume from this. The first submarine sinking. Within a few hours... Oh, this is not the... Yeah, no. Yeah, okay. Within a few hours of the outbreak of, of war, a German U-boat claimed its first victim. With no warning, the liner Athena, bound from Belfast to Montreal, with more than a thousand passengers, many of whom were women and children was torpedoed in the Atlantic. All but 112 were picked up by ships which hurried to her assistance. As a number of, pass of the passengers were Americans, the German propaganda department put out that the, a story that, the British, that a British submarine, on Winston Churchill's orders, had committed the deed to influence American opinion. The Athena is seen settling it down by the stern. As you can see. Now... Obviously, they would claim that um, Winston Churchill did this, even though he's not in charge of the government, of Parliament. He is, I believe, the First Lord of the Admiralty at this point um, in Neville Chamberlain's uh, government. So, 
That's why they would claim that he is. I could be a little bit wrong about those facts, but I do know he was in charge. I do believe he was first Lord of the Admiralty. It's going to be the last picture for this video. And then it says, German advance in Poland, September 1939. Here we see a bunch of what appear to be Germans riding horse, pulling some kind of equipment. It might say down here. German artillery moves up. And then it's probably the artillery. Uh, to econ 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 economize their stocks of gasoline, the Germans used thousands of of horse-drawn vehicles to follow up the advance of their mechanized units during the Polish campaign. Here, a German gun team crossing a river by one of the few intact bridges seems to be finding the Polish road, churned up by their own tanks and armored cars, difficult to, ne to negotiate. And here we see these men having their guns be pulled up from the bridge here on horse and on horse they got quite a few horses there which would be a little bit better for this rough terrain because then like um some vehicles because horses just they're good at pulling things but it is probably hard to pull all that on these horses these horses are probably not very happy all right well that's it for this video uh, i want to thank you guys um like and subscribe uh i plan on putting out two of these videos a day so you you guys can see more if you watch the next video but um, yeah, thanks.